Howdy, this is Chuck with Simply Nuck, and this is Beast Canyon. This is the replacement, our follow-on for the Ghost Canyon, and now supports full-length, full-height, double-wide video cards. Let's take a look at it. This is the prototype packaging, and so you can expect better packaging when, it, when your model comes to you from Simply Nuck. Looking at the inside, we do have a full uh, C14 to US power cord. And we have our regulatory documentation from Intel. And here it is. The front features a large backlit area for your, with the Skull logo, but it's replaceable with your own gamer badge. We also have an illuminated power switch. So this is both the power switch and reflects the current power state of the unit. We have two USB 2.0 slots, a full-size SD card slot, and a 3.5 millimeter HD audio slot. Looking at the bottom, there's a small switch that allows you to turn on and off the lighting for both the front and bottom. There's also an M.2 access door to put in your fourth M.2 SSD up to a 22110 and up to eight terabytes. Inside there's three M.2 slots and that is your fourth. Looking at the back and starting at the top, we have a C14 detachable power cord for your particular country, 100 volt to 240, 50 and 60 hertz. We have a Kensington lock to secure your unit and we have four number one screws to take the back panel off to get to the side panels and to the internals. There is a 16 lane Gen 4 PCI Express slot that uh, supports up to a double wide, full height, full length graphics card. There is a four lane PCI Express 3.0 slot for a, a, another plug-in card. And there's our Nook element. The Nook element's plugged in so it's easily replaceable. It has four, I'm sorry, six USB 3.1 Gen 2 USB ports up to 10 gigabit each, a full-size HDMI 2.0B slot, and two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C Alt-DP connectors. This allows you to support up to four 4K at 60 hertz monitors, or any other combination, one off of the HDMI and, and two off one of the Type-C's and one off the other, or all four off the two Type-C's. There is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and there's two antenna holes if you want to have external antenna connections. And I have put on my anti-static smock, my wrist strap, and I have an anti-static surface. It's important anytime you are dealing with sensitive electronics to prevent any static discharge. So on the back, there are four screws on each corner, and, I've, and these are captured screws. They won't come out, and so I've loosened them up. And then starting from the top, you kind of lift the corners up and they'll unsnap and then you unhook it off the bottom. So it hooks on the bottom and snaps over the, the top. The side panels just pull toward the back and come out. And there's the side panels. The top peels off and we're gonna do this gently. So starting with the back, there's they just snap off. You know, don't pull it hard, but just kind of work it. And along the front, there is an antenna that may be taped to the unit and so it may peel the antenna off and that's fine for now. This is a prototype and evidently that's something that Intel will be resolving on the production. All right, so there's the unit. To open this top, there are two arrows. You can kind of see the arrows pointing down and the word pull printed on this plate. 
So you're just gonna put your finger where the two arrows are, and I'm gonna pull it straight towards the camera. You might not have a camera set up in your case, and it just unclips, and then the whole thing swings up and over. Now you can see that I've already pulled the antennas, uh, the coax cables off, and I wanted to show you these to you. These, are, these were very difficult to remove. Uh, they need to be pulled straight up off the board, and you're just gonna have to work them for a while uh, putting, uh, trying to grip them on both sides. You probably could grip them with a needle nose pliers, but they need to pull straight vertically off of the element. And I'm just gonna tie them into these fans. You can see now that there's three blowers instead of two on the Ghost for additional cooling. All right. Now, looking at the other side, I do wanna point out that there is a little hole here which gives you access to the, uh, the card lock for the element. And so you just push that down and it unlatches the lock. So now the card is not locked in the slot. All right. Now the cables I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna start with the high density cable, which is at the top. I'm gonna pull it straight away from the element card. This has a USB 3.2 Gen 2. It's a, a very precise cable and the twisted pair and lengths and uh, you know we don't want to damage that so we're just going to pull that and just kind of hook it out of the way. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the power cable for the element. There's a little locking tab. I'm pushing it down and working that out. And then for the element itself, the locking tab is between the power supply and the cable. And so I'm going to depress that while just working it out. And there is your cable with its locking tabs. We got that out of the way. There's our various power cables for the um, graphics cards. Now I'm just going to go ahead and unlatch them and uh, get them out, uh, kind of out of the way. I'm not going to take the plate off, but it kind of, this is a real busy area. And so I'm going to push down on the lock while just wiggling that out. And once it's unlocked, it'll come out. And then the second one the same way. Now I can grab this one better. All right, and there's our two cables that are going off to the various uh, video cards, and they're kind of out of my way. Now, on if, if you remember the previous unit, the Ghost Canyon, there was all kinds of cabling uh, into it. What they've done is they've taken all of those cables and they've put in kind of a single docking cable. So if we dig all these out of my way, we'll get down to the board and there's a single cable there. And I'm going to unplug it. And now you can see what I'm talking about here. So there's, this is just a little short adapter that has multiple other connectors. So all of these, that one would plug in the on the old ghost, this one and this one, and they had another one. And so those all just are collected on this one little adapter. So now that gets that out of my way. And at this point, the board is clear. The only cable that's left is the blower. So next thing we're going to do is go to the back of the unit and we're going to remove or loosen this screw. And this is a captured screw again. And when we do, it'll just swing down out of the way. We're going to take the center screw. Now these are the first screws I'm working with that are not ca captured. So I'm gonna grab them. But when I pull that screw out, it brings out this uh, plenum or this little duct work. And this allows air from the back of the unit to get to this blower that's built into the unit. And so that helps to try to get some air uh, ducted into it. But if you're using the by four slot, you'll have to take that out to use that slot. And then we have the screw for the element itself. And I'm gonna take that out, just one screw. Now what's left are the two plates for either a single or double wide graphics card. All right, so at this point, I've, I've gone to the back and ejected there's a locking tab. All of these uh, big slots have little locking tabs. Let's see if I can get that. So there's these little locking tabs that you might be familiar with, and they need to be up to eject. And so I, on the back, I've, I've ejected it. 
and I've taken the screw out and I've taken all the cables out and I just kind of need to get out of my way. I'm going to slide the card up out of the slot and then I'm going to swing it gently out and there is my element card. Hopefully I didn't make it look too easy. It is a beast to try to get this thing out if you don't know how. And you can see the only cable left is the blower. And we'll get back to this in just a minute. So now we're going to cover some of the um, features of this base unit. So you can see here is our 16 lane slot for uh, a single or double wide graphics card, our four lane slot for a secondary card, and our 16 lane slot for the baseboard from the element. We have a large power connector to bring power over to the slots. And we have some other cables for various reasons. And remember that on the bottom of the unit is a little door. And inside that door is the uh, 22110, 2280 SSD that bolts to the bottom of this. And there's also this reset switch right there. So, All right, so that's a unit. And then the power supply is not the 500 watt that was in the Ghost Canyon, it's considerably higher. And just look on the screen right here and it'll tell you the wattage. So I believe that's all you can see about the inside. The aptly named Beast Canyon, because this is a beast of a unit, supporting the latest 3000 series double wide full size graphics cards, 11th gen Intel core processors and up to 32 terabytes of storage. Head over to simplynook.com, custom configure your unit and Simply Nook will ship it to you. Thank you.